so it's a typical gloomy day in Britain and today I'm going to be trying to do some wildlife photography so I'm going to be talking about how to do low light wildlife photography and yeah stick around to see what photos I get and the tips on how to do it. So there's a deer in this field behind me and I'm actually going to show you how I'm taking this photo. Now the deer's not going to move anywhere so I'm going to flip the camera on the phone and show you what I'm seeing on the back of my screen and show you how I'm actually taking this photo. So here you can see my settings. I have the ISO on auto. I then have my normal settings are about 1 250th of a second for shutter speed and f6.3 which is the lowest I can do on my 600 millimeter lens. But it's very low light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that shutter speed all the way down. There we go. Now my ISO is now 100. So then I might bring the aperture up a little bit because there's a nice building in the background which we could try and get. Um, and I think that is good settings. The ISO is now pretty low. We have a decent aperture and the shutter speed is low because I'm using a tripod and it's very low light. Now the deer is facing backwards so I'm going to stick around and hopefully it'll turn around um, and I can get some better shots. So I've come across a few species, um, I came across a young pigeon, I came across a rabbit, um, some really cool water droplets but again I took them all at a very low shutter speed and I was actually hand holding but the um, stabilization in the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens helps so definitely helps for low light photography. Now I'll show you those photos and I'll also put what the settings were when I took them. Now some of them had a high ISO and it's important not to be afraid of low ISO obviously you don't want it um, if you, you want the lowest possible but it can be helped in post-processing and you know we can't be too fussy. I also thought I would just add I'm using flash so I'm only using the flash which is built into the camera which has its downsides um, such as light reflection in the eyes but that can be changed in editing so I'm not worrying about that. Um, I'll talk about flash a bit more later it's definitely useful in low light photography um, because it lights up the subject but you've got to do it right otherwise you can over or underexpose the foreground or the background so yeah I'll talk about that later when I talk about the rest of the settings. So we're now sitting down and we're going to talk about the actual things you need to do on your camera to get good low light wildlife photos. So my tip number one is use a tripod if possible. Now especially if you're using a heavier lens you want to use a tripod. The reason for this is that you can put the shutter speed a lot lower. So I've handheld actually even most of this walk but at the beginning I was using a tripod um, and using a tripod does help you get a lower shutter speed. Now as I said earlier the uh, Sigma built-in stabilization definitely helps um, so if you've got that use it 100% um, because the aim is to get the shutter speed as low as possible. If you can get the shutter speed low while still getting a sharp image you will definitely get less noise in the photo. So that's tip number one. Use a tripod to get the shutter speed lower. Tip number two is to simply take more photos. If you're going to use a lower shutter speed then take more photos as there's a bigger chance that one of them will be in focus. So yeah definitely use burst mode. Another thing you want to do is get the aperture as open as possible. So that means you want the most light coming in, you want the smallest field of focus possible um, and that means in your camera when you're looking through the viewfinder you'll see at the bottom or if you're looking at the screen 
you'll see the smallest number. So you'll see F6.3, F5. They're the kind of ones I go with. Um, you're not going to use F11 or anything. Even for bigger animals, I'd advise not to do it because it does make the ISO a lot higher. So, I've been talking a lot about ISO. The reason you want the ISO to be as low as possible is because this is the kind of electronic light that the camera adds to it, which we don't want in our images because that's where you get the noise, all the kind of speckles in the image. So, to get rid of that, you simply want your aperture and your shutter speed to be as low as possible. That should bring the ISO down, but I don't think that you should not take a photo with a high ISO. I mean, I've taken photos in the past with high ISOs. They've not been that great, but with, for me, um, I think it's the behavior much more than the actual image quality. Um, now you're trying to get the best behavior possible. You're, like what makes a wildlife photo is the behavior that the wildlife is showing when you take that photo. So if there's a reason you do need a higher shutter speed or a higher aperture, 100% go for it and just put the ISO a little up. I mean, you can say that you planned on it. Um, I know there's many people who do. Um, Peter McKinnon often adds noise to his photos afterwards. So, you know, it's a style that can definitely be used. And I said I'd talk about flash a bit more. Now, if you're using the flash built into your camera, this flash, you will probably get reflections in the eyes. In many of my images I did get reflections in the eyes, but I edited them out afterwards. Um, this is what I tend to do, because I need the light, I need that extra light on the front of the bird but you will get reflection in the eyes. Now, you can combat this by buying an uh, external flash on top. I don't have one of them yet, but I will do. But there's a red kite, so I'm gonna try and take some photos. So I got some photos of that red kite flying. He's in this tree back here, um, and I can't see him. I think he's sitting on the other side of the tree, but there's loads of jackdaws which are mobbing him because they're nesting in a building nearby. So, as I was saying before the red kite interrupted, um, I don't have an external flash. I just use the camera flash, but flashes all work in the same way, really. You control how strong the flash is. Um, now, you want the flash to be the right strength. You can't just flash at any bird and hope that it'll be all right. So, um, for me, I used to have too much flash. So I'd take a photo and the bird would be beautifully lit up and perfect, that'd be great. But the background would just be dark. And these photos, you get the bird, but yeah, the background's just not there and that doesn't work as a photo, it looks artificial. So, you don't want to go the other way and not give enough flash that there's no difference though. But, yeah, too much flash makes the camera expose for the bird. Now, or the wildlife, the animal, I'm, I generally do birds, so that's what I'm saying, but... <laughs> so, the camera will automatically expose for the animal if that's what you're focusing on. Um, which means, if your flash is really bright, then it's going to focus on the bird and getting that the right lighting. So if there's a strong flash, the bird's going to be really bright, and so the camera exposes low um, to make the bird the right exposure. However, the background, which hasn't got the light, is not exposed for, so that ends up dark which is why you need the right amount. You need the right amount of flash that the bird gets lit up a little bit. So when the camera exposes for the bird, it stands out, but you can still see the background, there's still color and it's still there. It's not just black. So yeah, it's all about getting that right amount. I'll normally go plus one if it's a bright day. If it's a bright day, you'll use a bright flash because when the bird's lit up, the background is still lit up by the brightness of the day. Whereas on a dark day like today, I'll have my flash at minus one, 
um, because it's a dark day. If the flash is too strong, as I said before, the bird will be exposed and the background won't. So by having a duller flash, because it's already a dull day, that will still light up the bird, but it will leave the background as still there. So I hope you know what I'm saying. Um, it's a bit complicated, but... And I have one last tip. When you're taking photos of birds, especially when they're on a branch and there's the sky behind them, say they were sitting on top of the tree line up here, and you take a photo, it's similar to the flash. Um, if you focus on the bird, the camera may automatically expose the background. And if the background is grey as it is now, or just bright, then the bird will appear very dark. You'll almost get a silhouette. So this is something you've got to bear in mind. Um, you generally do want a background for your birds. Now, I have examples of photos I've taken before, which have this kind of silhouette effect, which I'll show you now. And sometimes it's great. Sometimes you want a silhouette. But if you want to see the colours of the bird and the beauty of the bird, then it's not always advisable. So make sure that you try to get a background or check the exposure levels you can expose it right so that the bird is exposed correctly but you'd have to do that manually so once again i'm actually going to show you how i'm taking these photos in this field behind me there's a lot of horses so they're not wild but they're animals and i can demonstrate how i do my low light photography with the horses so here's my screen at the moment you can see i've got an 80th of a second for shutter speed, 6.3 aperture, and my ISO is sitting at about 500. So I want to lower that, but that's not actually a problem if it's 500. So these horses are not moving very fast, which is good. That means I can bring the shutter speed down even further. I'll probably go to about 1 40th. And then I want to bring my aperture up because they're a larger animal. So I don't want just their eyelashes in focus or something. So yeah, we want a decent amount of focus for them. And now the ISO is about 640, 800. So it's gone up. But if we focus on the head. Okay, they keep getting in the way of each other. But you can see my settings. I'm now going to take photos with these settings and see what we can get. And it's just started raining on this beautiful British day. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Also, check out my other videos like my wildlife walks. You can pick up a lot of tips from there. Um, I just go out, walk around, talk about wildlife, take photos. It's quite nice, relaxing. And yeah, I drop a lot of tips and things there. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.